present our fleximeter finger uh, a bit forward, upward our right hand as much close to the thorax as, as possible and strike twice mm -hmm. but use the same force use the same force and same pressure yes okay we omit skip this heart area uh, what else uh, and compare the sounds now normal healthy sound should be resonant it's the same on this mannequin here for example should be resonant if we have some flavor diffusion and i percuse the area over here there will be dull percussion notes if the patient has copd for many years is smoker and has for example yeah. more than 10 years there should be hyper resonance on both sides I percuse. Pay attention. It's the it isn't obligatory to keep your fingers uh, parallel to the diaphragm. You can uh, strike uh, uh, use your fleximeter finger in any direction. It's obligatory to keep it parallel when we are looking for diaphragmatic extrusion. So if it is uh, unilateral pneumothorax, so there is lots of air just only in the right uh, lung. Here I percuse resonant uh, notes, and here I hear. Uh, yes, now let's check for uh, posterior thorax. Mm. Okay. okay. I'm also, they, they are given in your slides the uh, points where you should. Uh, I am percusing in a blender pattern. So it's normal resonant sounds, yes? Now, I want to. Uh, assist the diaphragmatic excursion. First of all, what we uh, do? First of all, we should uh, find the uh, uh, real uh, level of diaphragm. We don't percuse the diaphragm itself, but we percuse the uh, we find out the uh, level where the resonance is changed with dullness. So um, we imagine all that uh, the diaphragm should be somewhere here. Yes, not start percussion from here because in healthy person it should be here. So I keep my fleximeter finger just above and parallel to the expected level of diaphragm. Start percussion and go downward. I see here that my resonance here is changed with dullness, so my expected diaphragm is somewhere here. Patient is having quiet breathing, so he's breathing quietly. Now I want to assist the uh, diaphragmatic exclusion. I ask the patient, please do Deep in you remember this level, yes? <coughs> deep inspiration. The patient makes deep inspiration and keep breathing. I also continue. This dullness is shifted downward, yes? I remember this place where the uh, how much was this diaphragm shifted down. Then ask the patient to have the whole expiration and also keep breathing. Also, <laughs> diaphragm went upward. I start percusing upward and find out that there is a difference between the resonance and the dullness. So this distance between these two positions, so position of diaphragm on full inspiration and position of diaphragm on full expiration, the distance between them is diaphragmatic excursion. In normal healthy person it should be from 3 to, for example, I identified that this excursion is, for example, 1 cm, so I see that there is some problem. It may be because of many reasons, because of hyperinflated uh, lungs in, in COPD or because of pleural effusion. So remember, keep parallel. What else? Fremitus is done in such a manner, so we touch with our both hands, this hand asks to perform to say 99 1 2 3 and compare the palpable both feelings not the sounds i feel this vibration which is transmitted through the chest wall to my hands 99 99 99 99 yes it's normal and absolutely symmetric this one 99 one and one so we usually feel this parameters much better between the scapula. It is a bit decreased in normal and here is lowest. But for example, in huge pleural effusion, here we have lots of uh, fluid in uh, pleural. When I ask the patient to say 99, I feel less vibrations here, so tremitus is decreased. Mm -hmm. For example, here we have some uh, large pneumonia in the, uh, it is left one. In the, for example, in the lower uh, lobe. I ask to say 99. 
99 and I see that here I feel much more vibration. Mm -hmm. So Fremitus is increased. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. It is uh, how. how we do the uh, test for chest expansion. We keep our uh, thumbs uh, over this uh, tensor. If you know that yeah. 11 and 12 lips are floating ribs, yes? Yeah. Yeah. So the, yeah. this um, arc is done, uh, made with tense ribs. So keep your thumbs and uh, grasp your hands along the lateral uh, key, lateral um, parts of this thorax. As the knees uh, ski, uh, slide the medially to rise a loose skin fold, it is impossible on the mannequin, so I keep and ask the patient to make full inspiration, so, so deep inspiration. When the patient makes deep inspirations, when the lungs are filled with food, so the thorax uh, enlarge, yes? So my fingers diverge from each other. In healthy normal, I see that both uh, move uh, in the same manner, yes? If, for example, we have some many fluid accumulated in pleura, I will see that this uh, finger don't move so far as the uh, healthy side. It means that this expansion is uh, delayed here on the right side. Do you understand what yes, is it? The same we perform in, uh, from the anterior view of the chest. We also do this chest expansion test from this uh, anterior view. Keep our thumbs across this uh, costal arc and repeat the same. You understand? Yes, and do the, so. Do the same. So slide them medially, then ask to have a deep inspiration, and they also diverge from each other. It's, now let's perform this. Uh, uh, let's need to do it. Yes. Okay. Let's listen for vesicular sounds. Use this normal stethoscope. Yes. So. For so vesicular sounds are heard throughout the lung surface, so elsewhere, except tracheal sound is heard over the neck, yes? So you should put your stethoscope over here and ask the patient to breathe, it's tracheal sound course and now, then comes uh, bronchial sounds, bronchial sounds are heard over the mainstream main main bronchi, so behind the membrane is here is right here, it is continued uh, through this nasal bronchi, then to the right, left, and uh, segmental and global, yes? So, if I ask you, please find out where you can auscultate in normal healthy person the uh, bronchial sound, you should put your stethoscope just here, yeah. behind the manipulum, yes? Okay. Then, uh, when we uh, and, uh, when it is normal to auscultate the bronchovesicular sounds yeah. in healthy person, yeah. it is best heard in the first and second interspaces, so below the clavicles, here is uh, uh, since this uh, uh, ribs. So it's first interscapular uh, space, it's second. It's the same on the um, right. So if you should put your stethoscope over the first and second inter, uh, inter, um, intercostal, yeah. and also it is best heard between the scapula here. Here, here you can uh, sound the bronchovesicular sound. But if you hear the bronchovesicular sound somewhere here on the basis in axilla, it means that some abnormality happens there, some inflammation or some problems. Then you should check for uh, additional sounds and for transmitted sounds. Okay. What else should I tell you? So egophony and how it's performed. Egophony and uh, bronchophony and the whispered. Uh, so, ask the patient to say uh, uh, E and put your stethoscope anywhere, for example here. And you are listening that healthy person, it, in healthy person it sounds as long muffed E. But if there is, for example, pneumonia over here, it sounds as A. You understand? It's called egophony. What about bronchophony? Bronchophony, also ask the patient to uh, use our stethoscope, uh, ask the patient to say 99 or 1, 2, 3, uh, and are listening for the sounds. If the sounds are louder in your stethoscope than, than without your stethoscope, how we, can you compare? The patient says 99, you hear is without your stethoscope, and use your stethoscope, and hear this sound. If he, you hear with your stethoscope the sounds are louder, it means that it's bronchophony. It happens over the uh, uh, area, uh, under this uh, area, it's consolidated lung tissue, so we have pneumonia here. Same is whispered uh, bacteria. Look, you ask to repeat the same 99, but uh, with uh, two whispers in 
99, 99, like this. But you can hear the sounds louder than uh, without the stethoscope, you understand? So these three methods are uh, diagnostic, confirm the diagnosis of pneumonia. For example, if you be with the patient who has chills, cough, uh, for example, you um, uh, find out that you have here some increased flemitus, there is dullness over here, you can say for sure that you have some uh, problems, here's pneumonia, or how can you differentiate the pneumonia and pneumonia? The uh, percussion sounds should be... Dullness, There should be dullness in both cases, yes? In pneumonia should be then flat or dullness, and uh, dullness we uh, uh, hear over the uh, effusion over the pneumonia. On both cases, we hear down percussion, no, not resonance, not uh, hyper resonance, not tympani. But if pneumonia, the frametus will be increased, and in uh, effusion, parameters will be discreet. <coughs> we will practice on such differences. How, how do we shift medially? Like you, when you like shift it medially, right? We shift medially just only it's when we assist the chest expansion. Yeah, like how? Ah, how it is impossible to do on mannequin, but, but you can uh, put your hands firmly attached, grasp the lateral sides, mm -hmm. and move them. It we is should, very we hard. So, we should not, like put pressure on the. Uh, we'll put pressure, of course. Put pressure, slide them such yeah, to rise uh, and yeah, uh, yeah. fold uh, over the vertebra, yeah. and then ask to have deep inspiration. You understand? Yeah. I never perform.